uh, try to go through quickly, but this uh, on the surface may stir some controversy and, and uh, other things. It's, it's something called Sariyat Muhammad ibn Maslaba. Or basically it's just a small group that was sent on a mission. It's, it's, it's if you will, a commando group. It's only four or five, we'll mention their names. And they were sent on a mission from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to assassinate one of the Jewish leaders. So that's where some people may think that this could be a controversial issue, and it's not. And I would like to just spend some time explaining what it is and what happened. The man that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam basically wanted executed, his name was Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf. So what did Ka'b do to deserve this? To deserve a campaign of, of people that just their, their mission is to go and execute Ka'b. Ka'b was a, a Jewish man who had hatred and animosity and he did not hide that against Muslims. But he was also one of the people that signed the treaty with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this combined defense treaty, this non-aggression treaty with Muslims. He was a man from Tayyip, from a, a tribe called Tayyip, which is an Arab tribe, not all Jewish. But his mother was from the people of Bani Nubayr. And Bani Nubayr is a Jewish tribe. And he lived uh, south of the places uh, of the houses of Bani Nubayr. And he was a very rich man. And he was a very handsome man. And he, in, in, in the description, uh, which is uh, basically uh, more detailed in Ibn Ishaq that he was some of the most handsome people in Arabia and he uh, was also known as a well-known poet in Arabia so we know poets are propaganda tools in Arabia at that time <coughs> so he was a rich man and he was a poet so he had ways of transmitting whatever he wanted to be transmitted out and when he heard about Badr, what he said, he said, هذا, is this true? Is this what happened in Badr? Those are, the, he's talking about the people that are killed in Badr of the pagans. He said, Arab. Those are the noblest of Arabs. And Muluk nas they are the kings of people. Wallahi, in kana Muhammadun asaba haula, Wallahi, if Muhammad would be victorious over these people, then it's better to be under the ground than to be above the ground. It's better to be dead, if that is what it is. And then when, when he uh, basically knew that that's exactly what happened, he started kidding his poetry against Muslims. And then he started attacking the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his own poetry, and attacking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character. So this poetry is like having a station or something. It's really something that would spread. And this, this poetry started hurting the Muslims very much. And then he didn't stop there. He didn't stop insulting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and insulting Islam. He went on basically to uh, uh, make the people of Quraysh to get their enthusiasm against Muslims. He continued his poetry to ask the people of Quraysh to retaliate. To ask the people of Quraysh to come and bring their armies and take revenge for whatever they lost in Badr. And then the last thing he did, he went to Mecca himself. Now he went to Mecca and he sat with Abu Sufyan and he started telling them the poetry about the people that are killed in Badr. So maybe they can get angry and maybe they can just get that power so they can just go on and fight against Islam and get rid of Islam in Medina. And then Abu, Abu Sufyan and then the, the pagans with him, he, they asked him a question. He said, Ka'ab, we know that you're a learned man. You're a Jewish man and the Jewish people know their, they know the, the Torah, they know the, 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 all these things that Muhammad talk about. Talk about Sulaiman and Dawood. You know these people. We want to ask you a question, Ka'ab. Adinuna khayr am dina. Is our religion better or his religion better? In your eyes, in the eyes of a learned Jewish man, do you think that idol worshipping is better or monotheism is better? See what kind of a question is this? So Ka'ab said, La wallahi, antum ahda minhum sabila. 
That you are on the right path. You are the guided people. The Muslims are the misguided people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, chapter 4, verse 51. أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ وَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هَؤُلَاءِ أَهْدَى مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَبِيلًا صدق الله العظيم Don't you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَمْ تَرَ For those who were giving a share from the book, they were given a Torah, the Jews, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ They believe in the tyrants and the transgressors. He was crying over Abu Jahl. He was crying over Umayyah ibn Khalaf. He, was, he said, those are the people that died in Badr. Those are the noble people. Those are the good people. They believed in the tyrants and the transgressors. وَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And he says, and they say to those who rejected, to those who disbelieve, to, to, to don't believe, that هَؤُلَاءِ أَهْدَى مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَبِيلًا That indeed the pagans are guided much better than those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Kaab came back to Medina, and then the last stage of his hatred campaign against Muslim, he started mentioning the names of Muslim women, and he started telling lies about their honor, which is something very, very serious in the eyes of, of any man that has honor. So he started talking about Muslim women, and talking about they do this and they do that, and Muslims just could not take it anymore from this man. Now this man, we remember the treaty. The treaty that we, we studied, I'll just mention a few things. That in the Yahud Ummatun Ma'al Mu'mineen, that the treaty said that Yahud should be one nation with Muslims. Whatever is for Muslims in Medina is for Jews in Medina. Wa inna baynahum un nusha wa nasiha that they should advise, good give advice to each other and protect each other. Wal dur dun al ithim and they should have goodness and their treatment amongst themselves. So how beautiful the treaty is, and what this man is doing. Another thing he said, وَإِنَّ الْيَهُودَ يَتَّفِقُونَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَا دَامُ مُحَارَبِينَ That if the Jews, if the Muslims are, are being fought by another enemy, then the Jews will stand with Muslims. Now he goes to where? He goes to Mecca, and tell the Meccan, that no, you're on the right path, and you should retaliate, you should go and, and fight Muslims. And this is the treaty. So, does this man deserve execution or not? He does. This is a war criminal. This is a man who rejected the treaty that they knew that this is a treaty of blood. That if a Muslim transgressed on this treaty, then Rasulullah would punish that Muslim. If a Muslim transgressed against the Jews. So, these are, this man is doing is becoming a propaganda tool to make the others come and kill Muslims inside Medina. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had it, and their, uh, the honors of Muslims were boiling with the poetry that he was given against their own women, their own sisters, their own daughters, their own wives. It's, it, and, and then their religion, and then he started attacking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Muslims couldn't take it anymore. And then came to Rasulullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Man li kaab. Who would get him? فَإِنَّهُ آذَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ he indeed harmed, tried to injure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, nobody can hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he's, he's trying to harm, to hurt the, the image of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be pleased with. So he angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then volunteers came out, those commander Muslims that wanted to come on this, on this mission. First one was Muhammad ibn Maslam. May Allah be pleased with him. And he was the leader of this commander group. And then another one was called Abu Naila. And his real name, this is Abu Naila, is his nickname. His real name was Salkan ibn Salama. And Salkan, this Abu Naila, is the brother of Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf, the target in, in, in Rada'a, in nursing. That his brother, they were nursed together as children. He said, I'll go kill him. Send me to him. I know this man. And then uh, another one was Ibad ibn Bishr al-Harith ibn al-Aws and Abu Abs. There were five people that were sent to, uh, to get Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf. So Rasulullah, Ka'b came and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, do I have a permission to trick him? Can I trick him 
before, I mean, I basically will have to tell a lie to get him out of his fortress so I can kill him. There are only five of us, and he's a rich man with so many servants and so many. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, because in war, you can do that. And this is a definitely declared war, and declared war not by Rasulullah, it's declared by Ka'ab himself. He declared war against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Muhammad ibn Maslama came to, to this man and he said, in هذا الرجل, he started speaking about, since he took the permission of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tried to speak of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a way that is not very respectful. He said, that man, meaning Muhammad, is asking us now for sadaqah. Because zakah in the second year of hijrah was basically put in. He said, he wants money from us, Muhammad, now. And, and, وَإِنَّهُ قَدْ عَنَانَا And we're just tired of this. Just too much to pay Muhammad. Would you give us a loan? And Ka'ab said, Wallahi latamalanna. Wallahi, you will be, you will be bored with Muhammad. You will see what he will do with you. Now he wants some money, tomorrow he wants something else. Why don't you just leave him? And Muhammad said, Inna qad ittaba'na. We followed him and we, we don't want to leave him now. We want to see if he will become victorious or not. Because if he is uh, going to have more victory and more support, we don't want to leave him now. Let's just wait and see what happens. So Ka'ab said, فَأَرْهِنُونِي Then give me something instead of the loan that I will give you. He said, وَمَاذَا well, نُرْهِنَكَ well, What would we give you for, for, what the, for what you're going to give us? He said, نِسَاءَكُمْ Give me your women and I'll give you money. Muhammad said, we give you our women and you are the handsome, the handsomest of Arabs. I mean, what would you want, what do you want us to do? We cannot give you our women. He said, then give me your children. I'll take your children and then when you bring the money, I'll give your children back. He said, do you want Arab to say that we gave our children to you for such and such money? It's not worth it. I mean, we will be ashamed. It will be embarrassment for us to say that we gave our children for a hundred dirham or two hundred dirham or whatever. That doesn't work. He said, well, what do you want to give me? He said, we give you our weapons. We will bring weapons and give it to you. So see the intelligence and how smart Muhammad is. Because if they come to Ka'ab with weapons, he will never get out of his house. <laughs> and you're coming to kill me. But if he thinks that they're coming to give him the weapons, then he would come out to, to face his fate. He said, then, but don't tell anybody that I came to you, Muhammad ibn Muslim, because I don't want people to know that I'm dealing with you and we know what's between you and Muhammad. He said, okay, I will not tell anybody. Abu Na'ila, his brother in nursery, in, in Rabah, in, in he came to him, he said the same thing that now I have to pay my zakah and, and I just need some money and I've spent all the money that I needed to spend and I need to, to get money from you. But don't tell anybody. And, and Kaab said, okay, well, let's do the same and, and uh, I'll give you the money. Give me the weapons. So on the 14th night of Rabi al-Awwal, full moon night, on the third year this group of people came to Kaab and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam walked with them from Medina until they reached al baqiq and then he said intaliqu ala ismillah then you go on and, and you get this enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma anhum may Allah support them and then he came back to his house and prayed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicated that Allah would help this small group to, to achieve this mission and get this enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Ka'ab uh, was in his house waiting for these people to bring him the weapons, the swords and whatever, so that he can give him the money. And his brother, Abu Na'ila, cries out for him. He hollered and he said, Ka'ab, come on and, and come to be with us. His wife, Ka'ab's wife said, I hear death in his voice. He said, what death? He's my brother. And he's coming, I had an agreement with him. She said, don't go out to him. He said, no, I'll go out. I, I know my brother well. So he comes out and he goes to see Abu Na'ila. And then he saw Muhammad ibn Maslama. And, and uh, Abu Na'ila had an agreement with Muhammad and the other uh, four. He said, I will try to grab him so you can come and, and execute him. And I can't grab him. I have to tell him that I'm going to smell your hair because he always took care of his hair and took care of his appearance and the perfumes. And I, I'd love to smell. So when I grab him and I give you the sign, you come and kill the man. So he saw Abu Na'ila, he saw Muhammad, and he was still cautious and careful what to do with them. 
and he saw the weapons and they said, oh yeah, Kaab, we want to it just, it's a beautiful night, it's a full moon night, why don't we take a walk? And he said, fine, let's just take a walk and, and walk together. Then Abu Naila said, what is this perfume? Can I get closer to you and, and smell your perfume? And he said, fine. So he was close to his fortress. So he knows that they can't hurt him yet. So he gave him his head and he asked, SubhanAllah, said, what is this beautiful perfume? And this is great. So they walk a little bit further and every few steps Abu Naila would just say, can I smell more? Can I get some whiff of that perfume? Abu Naila, and then the Ka'bi would give him his head and then just smell that perfume. Perfume is a big thing for them. It's not used to do that. Then when they, after they walk for about an hour, they know they're far away enough from the fortresses, from the, the arrow, the arrows of the guards. Then Abu Naila said, can I smell your head one more time? And he <laughs> gave him his head and he grabs him. And that was the sign. And then after they grabbed him, they come and they execute this enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he cries and all the fortresses get alerted, but it was too late and it was too far. And they brought the news to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there was one man that was actually wounded by, by, the, by the, his friends. His name was Al-Harith. He was wounded by when they were stabbing uh, Ka'b ibn Ashraf and in the darkness he was stabbed himself by mistake and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa put his saliva on his wound and it was a miracle that he was completely healed and after the Jews heard the news of uh, Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf being executed the, uh, they knew what Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf was doing to the Muslims and they knew every single uh, article of the treaty that he broke with the Muslims so they did not call for retaliation they did not call for revenge and they submitted that he received what he was asking for so there was no backlash from executing this criminal this enemy Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf so we have to stop and I apologize about taking too long and inshallah we conclude by uh, dua Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'na وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وفقا في الدين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم teach us the story of the life of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and make him our role model in life and help us to follow his footsteps and to follow his way of life inshallah so would be pleased with us ameen اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أذان العشاء أثابكم الله